Hi. In this video, we'll be looking at uh, how we've uh, expanded the functionality of uh, MetaCloud creation to uh, uh, into the realms of uh, animation and morphing the MetaClouds. You'll see on the screen at the moment um, a quick video of uh, the the effect. It's uh, an extreme example, but nevertheless, it d details not only how the the cloud can morph but also how um, it can morph uh, in terms of materials. So we'll have a quick look at how this is uh, created. Uh, on the screen at the moment, uh, you can see um, a meta cloud, which I made previously. Um, so I've already created this meta cloud. I've also on the screen got uh, another meta cloud which is one created from a mesh again the link you saw previously uh, refers to how we can create um, a meta cloud from any mesh that we can get inside view as long as it's a nice closed volume so let's go back to the beginning just to have a look at the the first cloud it's just a standard meta cloud um, material is standard just a white fluffy cloud nothing special in terms of the settings the more interesting one of the two is probably the uh, the elephant cloud where the material has been edited very very simple edit you'll see um, just a few nodes here I know some of you don't like uh, <laughs> a function editor but uh, these things are a necessary tool in the in the uh, CG industry um, so it's just some round samples you'll see there I've reduced the round samples from the default which I think is zero to three samples I've just gone down to uh, zero to one sample samples just to round you know to to separate some of the dots so that we have less dots showing so we can get a separation between each of the circles filter just in case and then the color node which is just a very again very simple color node which is uh, a pale blue fading through to pink to give it that cartoony kind of uh, feel so again nothing clever about this uh, other than the the color itself it's all fairly standard settings um you will notice that I have the low density quality boost on and the improved consistency at low rendering resolutions simply because if I don't switch them on now, I'll probably forget later. So that's how we make this, uh, make this happen. So let's switch both clouds on so that we can see it's an interesting effect straight away. Uh, <laughs> In many respects, you can see how the two clouds are relative to one another. The position of the clouds can be whatever you want from one side of the screen to the other, one cloud directly on top of the other. So we can morph not only horizontally, vertically, uh, forwards and backwards, but also in terms of shapes. So let's have a look setting this up. We go to animation and we click on the morph clouds tool. It's a very, very simple tool, this one. We get to choose which is the first cloud, i.e. the first cloud in the sequence. So we know it's going to be the uh, intelligently and sensibly titled cloud called Group. And we're going to morph into the Ellie full color. Starting time, I'm going to start at zero seconds. Ending time, I don't want this to be a tremendously long uh, rendering so let's make it five seconds and we'll do okay so what view is going to do now is it's going to make a, uh, do a calculation of how many spheres have got to move where they've got to move to what size they need to be so that we can move one cloud into the other cloud once this process is completed um, a third cloud will appear in layer two okay the third cloud has appeared. Okay, this is a new object within the scene. It's a new animated object. 
We didn't set up the animation timeline, but Vue has automatically done that for us because we said we wanted this to transition over five seconds. You'll see also that Vue has intelligently made it so that neither the group, i.e. the original cloud, nor the elephant cloud um, will appear in the renders. So they've switched off, made them invisible to render. And the only cloud we have left is the animated cloud. Now, obviously, we can set this, this up to, to run. Let's have a look at the settings. Um, my little preview is exactly that, rendered in preview. Um, I believe, it. yes, 10 frames a second so that we get kind of a time lapse uh, thing going on because, again, this is just a test. It's not a final animation. Um, and then we can click render animation when we're ready and the result will be as you see on the screen at the moment. It's a lovely simple process uh, and, in, and an enjoyable one. It's, uh, it's always nice to put some life into a render. Uh, the beauty of this uh, particular uh, technique is if we output the animation as uh, default in a series of PNGs, Photoshop um, will assemble that for you. Um, I did my editing of the video in Camtasia, but Photoshop will certainly recognize a, um, a sequence. So at the moment, for some reason, it's all arranged backwards, but you can see we go from zero, one, two, three, all the way up to just 30 frames in this particular instance. Again, it was just a test, just so I could show you just how incredibly simple the process is and, the, and how much fun it can be. Um, I would look forward to seeing some of your renders, some of your animations, to see what kind of uh, cloud sequences we can actually come up with. Um, yeah, so get back to us. Let us know what you think. Uh, give us some feedback on social media. Always happy to hear from you. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.